On Monday the 26th of September, NASA's DART spacecraft crashed into the asteroid Dimorphos. Now, this was a test to see whether we could transfer enough energy to an asteroid in order to deflect it or change its orbit in case in the future we find an asteroid that's a threat to Earth. Now, straight away after the impact, we got images from the spacecraft itself as it approached this double asteroid system, Didymus, the big one, and then its little asteroid moon Dimorphos that it eventually crashed into the surface of. We then observed the aftermath of that impact with both the Hubble Space Telescope and JWST as well, as dust and debris was thrown up and out from the crash in a huge plume. That dust reflected more sunlight and therefore the system got much brighter to us. So those images straight after were really useful because it showed us that the impact of the spacecraft had actually had an effect on the asteroid. The question that we all still had though was how much of an effect? Now, this asteroid Dimorphos was specifically chosen to do this test because it's in orbit around another one, Didymus. So by measuring the change in the orbit of the asteroid, i.e. how much closer Dimorphos got to Didymus and how long the orbit therefore took before and after the impact, and then with that information, we could then work out how much energy was actually transferred to this asteroid Dimorphos. Then in the future, if there was ever an asteroid threat to Earth, we could then run the maths and say, okay, we were able to transfer this much energy to that asteroid. If we transferred the same amount of energy to this new asteroid, this hypothetical one that we haven't actually found yet, but could be a threat to Earth, how much of a deflection would that asteroid take by transferring that much energy? And therefore, how much would it slow it down so that instead of impacting with the Earth, it would just miss instead? So the work didn't end with that impact a few weeks ago. Since then, there's been lots of follow-up observations, either with telescopes here on the ground or in space, or even the Lycia Cube satellite as well. So just a little satellite that was designed by the Italian Space Agency that detached from the main DART spacecraft before the impact and recorded the whole thing. All of this work that's been ongoing has been working towards answering three main questions. First of all, did the DART mission work? Did we manage to change the orbit? of this asteroid. Secondly, how much energy did the crash actually transfer to the asteroid? And question three, would that amount of energy be enough to actually change the orbit of any asteroid that we find in the future that could be a threat to Earth? So let's start with the big one, shall we? Did it actually work? Well, yes, it did. NASA released this data on Tuesday that had been collected by various different telescopes from Hawaii to South Africa to Chile of what's called the light curve of this asteroid system. It's essentially a plot of the brightness of the two asteroids. So sometimes you can see both of the asteroids reflecting light from the sun, and that'll be when you have the maximum brightness of the system. But sometimes Dimorphos will be behind Didymus, so the total brightness will drop. Sometimes it will be in front, which will block a little bit of Didymus's light, and again, the brightness will dip ever so slightly. So if you think about the fact that Dimorphos is orbiting Didymus, you can then say, okay, from how often those dips in brightness actually happen, you can work out how long does this orbit take. Now, before the impact, those dips occurred every 11 hours and 55 minutes, whereas after the impact, those dips were observed to be 11 hours and 23 minutes apart, plus minus two minutes uncertainty or so. That's a change of 32 minutes in the orbit time of Dimorphos, which is absolutely huge. Like the hope originally was, you know, to class the DART mission as a success and a useful way of, you know, planetary defense and deflecting asteroids was that it would change the orbit of Dimorphos by one minute, 13 seconds. And we've changed the orbit by 32 minutes. So you can see why everyone's so hyped about this. It's such good news. So now we know that it has actually worked. The big question is how much energy did the DART spacecraft actually transfer to the asteroid Dimorphos in this impact? Now, this is still being calculated, right? The amount of energy or momenta that the DART spacecraft managed to transfer to the asteroid. And you might be thinking, well, surely we can just calculate that now, right? From the, the change in the orbit time of this system, we should be able to know how much energy was imparted. We could do that, but it wouldn't be the whole story because of this huge plume of dust streaming off the asteroid after the impact 
that also contributes to the change in energy of the system. This dust plume has been captured by ground-based telescopes like this one in Chile and by like the Hubble Space Telescope too. It might just be little grains of dust, but it does all add up to give you tons of asteroid debris that essentially also adds this little bit of extra recoil to the impact. Kind of like, you know, like a rocket burning fuel, throwing something out that way so it can go that way, or even, you know, blowing up a balloon and letting the air out so that it flies around the room. That kind of recoil effect also adds to the amount of energy difference in the system before and after. So this change in the orbit of Dimorphos has not just been affected by the direct impact from the DART spacecraft, but also this ejector as well. So we're going to need to piece out those two different components, the change in energy from the actual impact, and then the change in energy from this dust plume that was thrown out as well. And that'll come from very, very careful analysis of that dust plume to work out where all the mass has gone and how much of an effect that will have. And this is important because no two asteroids are the same. They're not made of the same, they're not arranged the same you know have you got something that's very solid or have you got something that's more like sort of little grains of sand or lumps of rock all joined together loosely by gravity when you impact something into them they're gonna act differently so we need to know what is just coming from the dart spacecraft and what was a result of this this debris and dust that was thrown out because of the specifics of the asteroid itself and question three would the amount of energy that's been transferred from the dart spacecraft alone be enough so that calculation is going to be a crucial one, and it is going to take time also waiting for the European Space Agency mission HERA to go back to the asteroid system in about four years as well, get more accurate measurements on uh, Didymus and Dimorphos's mass too. So we are going to have to be patient for that, but once we know it, we can work out, okay, well, if this is the amount of energy we can transfer, given this specific asteroid and its orbit around the sun and its mass and composition, how much would its speed slow down by from this impact and therefore how much would it then miss the earth if it was ever uh, a threat to earth because if you remember from just high school science right the kinetic or movement energy of an object is equal to a half mv squared where m is the mass and v is the velocity essentially the speed just speed with the direction now if this energy goes down because of the impact in opposite direction so you cancel out some of the energy and we assume this mass stays roughly constant ish then the velocity of the asteroid the speed is going to go down to compensate for that drop in energy so your change in your energy is going to be equal to a half times your mass times your change in velocity squared. This means the change in an asteroid speed is going to depend on its mass. The smaller and lighter the asteroid, the bigger the change in speed and probably the bigger deflection it would have. The heavier the asteroid, however, the less change in speed we're going to have for the same amount of energy and therefore the deflection will be less. But of course, bigger asteroids pose a bigger threat. So there's going to be a lot of work done now understanding what the limits to this method actually are. Now, of course, with bigger asteroids, they're brighter, they reflect more sunlight. So they're easier to spot. And so you probably spot them from further away as well. You'd have more of an advanced warning. And so if you only could change the speed by a tiny amount to cause a tiny deflection, that deflection would be cumulative in terms of, you know, over time it would drift off more and more and more and more, of course. And so hopefully you would still end up in a scenario where you could deflect it enough so that the asteroid missed Earth. And that's all been really uncertain in the past, but with the impact from the DART spacecraft and with all the observations of this asteroid system we're going to make in the next couple of years, we'll actually be able to put a number on the amount of energy we are able to transfer to an asteroid so that we can then run the maths for a specific asteroid of this orbit, of, of this mass and this distance away from Earth. How much energy can you transfer? How much uh, do you change the speed of that asteroid? And therefore, you know, what number of months do you need to do this in advance in order to deflect it enough to miss the Earth. And so if we do ever find ourselves in the scenario where there is an asteroid threat to Earth, the hope is that essentially we will just have this other DART mission that we can freshly unbox and launch to avoid, you know, running around like headless chickens like you see in Hollywood disaster movies when there is an asteroid threat to Earth. So knowing that the DART mission was beyond a success is such a huge win for science and planetary defense in general, 
but I think it also means that we'll all sleep just that little bit better tonight with one less thing to worry about. That's one less thing to worry about. That's one less thing to worry about. Before we get to the bloopers, a huge thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this week's video. Brilliant is a website, an app that allows you to learn new concepts in science, maths, and computer science interactively with hands-on courses and new content added monthly. Their courses get you to learn by doing, which is personally the way I learn best. Now, one thing I hear a lot from people is that they want to become an astrophysicist or just get more involved with astrophysics, but maybe their maths isn't quite as strong as they'd like. And my advice in that situation is always just to practice, practice, practice until that maths becomes second nature to you. And I think Brilliance courses are a great way to do just that. They have a brand new course called Introduction to Algebra, which helps you get more comfortable with both equations and graphs that we use all the time in physics and astronomy. So if that sounds like something you'd be up for, check them out at brilliant.org forward slash Dr. Becky, or you can click on that link in the video description down below and sign up completely for free. Plus, the first 200 people that go to that link are going to get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So thank you so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And now, roll those bloopers. After the dot impact, we'll hopefully then be able to put... What is... I think that's a very wheezy lorry outside because it sounds... I mean, it doesn't sound healthy. They should really take that to a mechanic. You know, by measuring the change in the orbit, so how much closer Dimorphos got to... Did is that the right around? Dimorphos. Did I miss the demo? Why do they have to have such similar names? Like, they both start with D. And it's very hard for me to remember which D is which D. <laughs> so by measuring the change in that orbit, so how much closer Dimorphos got to Didymus, and also the change in the time that the orbit took, like after and before the imp after and before. Who says that? Before and after. <laughs> Probably could have got away with that, but no, my perfectionism won't let me. Oh, right, I love how when I get back from holiday, I can never actually be bothered to like set up the big camera upstairs. So I'm just like, I'll just do it on my phone in the living room where it's comfy and warm. I feel like I really look like Alexis then from Shit's Creek, just like David.